All of us have become broadcasters. And, you know, we're all from the, the video processing industry, which was focused so much on how can you get excellent video quality on 320 channels of, uh, of TV to your cable box. Now we're faced with the problem of how do you get excellent quality when there's a billion broadcasters trying to transmit video to their friends, tell their stories to someone across the street or someone across the country. And uh, we're, we've put together a solution which we think helps tremendously all of you in solving the problems associated with that. I really don't want to talk about macro trends in the industry to this people in this, uh, this show because you know it better than I do. But uh, I want to talk about the solution that we've put together for this. We're really looking at the data center and we said let's take a clean sheet approach. Um, but before that, let me introduce briefly the company that SocialNext is. It came together in 2015 from the merger of the semiconductor businesses of Fujitsu and Panasonic. Now, Fujitsu was traditionally very strong in video encode, a market leader in DSLRs, tremendously powerful <coughs> presence in broadcast encoding. And Panasonic obviously is very strong on the, on the decode side with television, set-top box, Blu-ray players, etc. Put these two companies together and the video processing assets in ENCODE and DECODE came together to form SocialNext, which has all the power of those video processing cores in chips. In, we are a fabulous semiconductor company, about one and a half billion dollars in revenue, 2,500 people um, headquartered in Japan. Uh, now, these, we, we said, how do we leverage all these assets to solve problems in media transformation? The first slide talked about the democratization of media transformation, and by that, I mean, when, when you have the individual as a broadcaster, and there's a billion individuals broadcasting, and you have, let's say, New Year's Eve, and there's hundreds of millions of source videos, all of which have to be transported live to their recipients. Each might have two, two, three, five recipients. How do you provide good quality in that huge volume of video? Now, you could just take that source video and throw it over the wall, but the, the whole point we're, we're trying to make is, let's not give pristine quality only to Netflix streaming video or CBS, let's give that individual's video a good quality of experience. And we leveraged our experience in broadcast and combined it with our experience in building the chip that powers the Hero 6. Um, this chip is a semi-custom semi VLSI. It it has uh, 4K HEVC encoding, but more importantly, it has the most pristine video quality. This is a chip which has taken both still and video image quality, whether it's underwater or a ski slope or on a surfboard, it's taken video quality and picture quality to the absolutely the next level. Now, we said, Let's see how we can leverage our strengths in video processing to solve problems for you folks who transport video across the internet. We took a clean sheet approach to that, or I can say a, a clean tin can approach to that by saying, let's say you got a tin can server, now what do I want to throw into it? We don't want you to have to change either your physical interfaces or your software interfaces. So the first thing we said we must throw into that tin can is substantial x86. Whether it's AMD or Intel, but substantial x86. We also said we must throw in, you know, 
redundant uh, hot swappable power supplies, 10 gig interfaces, or keep it, make it look like a server. Having done that, we still had about half the tin can available to us. And you know, we thought hybrid car. Now, you, know, you get into your car, you, you hit a button instead of turning a key, but after that, it drives like a car. So we wanted that same effect, the same um, approach with the new server design. So we threw in a hybrid engine with a sea of transcoders. We are a chip company and those chips are extremely powerful transcoders. We can take a quick look at them. I'm not, the, the, the prize is not for the person who understands this eye chart the best, but uh, just to give you an idea, this is a multi-format codec chip capable of both AVC and HEVC. As a matter of fact, it can do MPEG-2 as well. Um, it's got 4K60 capacity. Now, think of that in terms of macro blocks. So it's got 4K60 worth of uh, macro blocks of decode, 4K60 worth of encode, and you can mix and match AVC, HEVC, right? decode, AVC, encode, HEVC, and so on. Um, so those macro blocks can be deployed as a multi-stream decode, a multi-stream encode, which, when you combine with IDR, IDR synchronization, gives you adaptive bitrate processing. So I got an engine now which can do ABR processing on steroids. And most interestingly, we're, we're a chip company, a hardware company, not DSP. So we provision the chip with more gates for HEVC than for AVC. That gives me equal capacity for HEVC and AVC. Those of you familiar with uh, performance of X264 or X265 on a server, you know that that's an astounding statement to make. I have equal capacity for HEVC and AVC. So let's see what we can do with all this goodness. We've got 32 of these as a hybrid engine under an x86, right? Now, we said that we don't want you to change your software platform, so we put in or building shim layers to interface that hardware with FFmpeg, GStreamer, Wowza, and, and what have you. So your application stack can continue to run, and we will create shim layers as we go along to, to suit. The one RU with 32 of these chips inside can do 128 bundles of full HD ABR with profiles that you can program. So you set up profiles, one in, five out, um, 1080p 60 in, so that, you know, that gives you a lot of streams. If it's 720p, it can be as high as 256 bundles. And this is in a one RU at 750 watts, which means it's lower less than five watts per stream. It's incredible. Now, I said we're doing this on steroids. We have created something with the performance of a Ferrari, you know, compared to you know, in a one RU footprint. But we're also sensitive to the democratization uh, objective. So we're pricing it like a Prius. Um, stacking this up against uh, traditional data center servers, if I take the extreme bottom right, um, for HEVC, this box can do an incredible 20 plus times the performance. Whether you compare performance as cost, number of streams per one RU, uh, number of streams per watt, in whichever metric you take, and Ultimately, they really come back to one metric, cost per stream. Um, we're about 20, 24 times better than a, a very expensive and powerful data center server. Our cost per stream is lower by that factor. Um, AVC, obviously, less because the data center server, you know, the complexity of AVC is lower than ATVC. And there are accelerated uh, servers but we outperform any of them. I can with great confidence say that 
Today, we are the densest, lowest caste, best performing one are you on the planet. Um, talk about applications, we talked about the individual as a broadcaster. Now that's for live video, and all our, our solution absolutely works live. It also does 4K60 live, by the way. I can give you 32 channels of 4K60 live uh, encoding or transcoding in a, in a one hour year. Um, if you have stored video, which needs to be transcoded, processed, and delivered later, you can do this in a distributed fashion over 24 hour or seven, week, uh, seven days a week cycle. The volume of video is so high that your costs and the number of servers you're deploying is still high. So by having a dense server at lower cost per stream, you still save tremendously on stored video. With a big plus, I can store a single profile of HEVC, that means we have an AVC uploaded by a user, we propose to convert to HEVC, store as HEVC, a single profile, and let's say only 5% of that is pulled out of the server. Well, on the way out, we can do a live transcode to AVC or HEVC as the case may be. So you not only save on the, the higher compression of HEVC, but you also save because you store a single profile. So you, you'll actually end up saving about 60% on the storage side. Video calling is getting important. Uh, the codec is flexible and programmable. We can have a, a give and take between video quality and latency. And uh, we can enable vast services for high volume video calling traffic. Socionext is a chip company. Um, so, you know, effectively we've delivered the steroids. Uh, we needed partners to build out the complete product. And uh, in that we found Advantech and Softiron. Advantech is a very substantial Taiwanese company. They uh, have been working with us, their video solutions division has been working with Socionex and have built several products with us, adapters and so on, over the years. And they've now put together a complete server, which you can see in the next room. Uh, it's a GPU sized server with four PCIe cards, which gives you the 32 chips I talked about and all the, the densities I explained. And uh, they will soon be ready to, to deploy servers for a proof of concept. They are also happy to unbundle and offer you just a PCIe card if your companies prefer to integrate your own servers. Softiron is a California Bay Area startup. They have their own unique server design which they're applying to dense storage technology. And they then built modules which deploy transcoders with the same form factor as storage, giving them the ability to mix and match storage and transcoding. It's fascinating because all of you in video processing know that the storage requirements for videos is super high. So if you can mix and match transcoding and storage, you get a solution which, which, which really you can, which you can blend the two to your needs. They have 32 M30s in a box, and they are an AMD shop. So the Epic CPU that's come out recently gives uh, excellent connectivity between the CPU. That's actually you know seamless connectivity between the CPU and and 32 M30s. It's, it's like a match made in heaven. Um, they have shim layers for, for various software elements which allow you to run your choice of software on top of their platform. So with that, uh, I'm coming to the end of my talk and uh, I'll tell you the rules of the game as far as the, the GoPro is concerned in a minute. So what we've done is really put together a hybrid transcode server which facilitates the media transformation for live as well as for stored video for and allows you to scale up your data centers with incredible density, a tremendous cost saving. 
I'm going to call uh, Brian Carr and Tim Massey from Advantech and Softiron up here to help me take questions from the audience. And both of them have uh, are on the show floor, so you'll be able to to take a look at their products. And this GoPro goes to if you think about applications for dense transcoding or good questions, um, we have seated the audience with some judges who are going to decide who gets the GoPro. So ask questions. All right, everybody, I've got a microphone. Remember, you're not just competing for knowledge, you're competing for a GoPro. Who's got a fantastic question? <laughs> All right, we have our first question right here. So I'm curious how your, uh, how your box handles, say, sudden spikes in uh, incoming streams, given, um, you know, if something, you know, some event happens and there's a bunch of people around with their smartphones, they all start pulling out their phones and all start live streaming to, you know, and potentially, you know, th there are 4K cameras now. Right. So you're potentially looking at, I don't know, dozens of inbound 4K streams? Oh, thousands or millions. Yes. Uh, Brian? Excellent question. What was your name? Uh, Julia. Julia. All right. All right. Good question. Thank you. Not yet. <laughs> um, and that's a, that's a great point about dimensioning. Uh, there's nothing in uh, the architectures that we've discussed today that does not pre that prevents Elastic out into the cloud for overload. What you can do is build an excellent base load on the most the average use case or the most probable use case for most scenarios, and that has got a really good power budget associated with it. It's soft line. Like, Tim, would you like to? Yeah, I, mean, I just say. Um, Please uh, step up to the mics because you guys don't have a lavalier mic. Yeah, no, I think the, the main point is that, you know, we architect our hardware to be able to handle, uh, you know, up to the maximum. So that would never, uh, that would never really be an issue to be able to handle, you know, uh, 32 4K streams and, and uh, 128 um, 1080p streams. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Okay, we have one right here. Your name? Uh, Raga here. Uh, yeah. I have one question about uh, broadcast. Can you quantify the broadcast quality? Say again? Can you quantify the broadcast quality? Broadcast quality? Well, you know, this morning there was an interesting debate about that. And ultimately, we can have all the metrics in the world for quality, but, uh, you know, end of the day it comes to people with golden eyes who look at, look at streams. And we've been taking our... Uh, M30 is actually a chip from Socionex, which is... It's after a succession of AVC chips or MPEG-2 chips. So we've been going to broadcasters with these chips for 10, 15 years, and uh, I don't believe that structure, you know, that, that metrics really matter so much as visual perception. Okay, our next question is right here. What's your name? Forche. Yes. Hi. Uh, your chip, if it's used to transcode, uh, and not real time per se, but hopefully faster than real time, uh, is it threaded so that it can take essentially one at a time, or can a file essentially be chunked up and then run through multiple threads so it can go very fast? We have an application trying to move files as fast as possible through the transcoding process. Uh, the easy answer to that is yes. Uh, so the chip will enable you to do faster than real time for full HD. Obviously, at a 4K resolution, it basically does a little bit faster than real time to be able to cope with live. How much faster for HD than real time? Um, it's not quite 4X, but it's near. Okay, uh, another question for him. All right, right here. Give me your name and your question. Uh, my name is Charlie. So my question is that uh, you mentioned about like uh, you have same number of channel count for AVC and HVC encoding. So theoretically, shouldn't be like uh, if you're able to let's say 256 HVC encoding, shouldn't you be able to like double the channel count for AVC encoding? No, uh, we can't double the channel count for AVC because we've uh, think of it this way. Uh, let's take the encoder side. We have a separate encoder for AVC and a separate encoder for HVC. So our HEV, it's all hardware logic. So think of it that the HEVC encoder is two times or four times the size of the AVC encoder in terms of number of gates, say. So it's basically equal capacity for AVC and HEVC. Okay, I'm gonna allow one more question. Uh, we have one more shot. Can't win unless you enter. Um, you already asked one, Fred. 
Uh, let's give somebody else a chance now. All right, uh, we have one right here. This will be our last one. Give me your name and your question. My name is Brent. Um, do you guys currently use artificial intelligence for optimization, or are you, or what's the future of artificial intelligence in? We're, okay, a good question. We're taking a first stab at it. The product we describe today does not have any artificial intelligence in it. It's a hardware codec, right? And we've thrown it under an x86 to to boost performance. There's a second product which we are talking about at the Social X booth, where we've combined a, a, a CPU with the codec, and that's, I wouldn't go so far as to say artificial intelligence, but there's the beginnings of intelligence on the CPU side in that product. It's called the A20. Uh, we're showing it at the booth, and please have a look at it. Okay, there can be only, I'm sorry, it's time, we have to go. We are the track that begins and ends on time. So, who is the lucky winner of the GoPro Hero 6? I think I'm going to leave that to Sherry to... You're going to give that to... No, Sherry, Sherry's going to decide. Okay, so your PR person is here, and she is going to decide. All right. <laughs> Which of those five questions impressed you the That's most? Funny. Which one had the most knowledge and the most thought? I did too. Yeah. They were all good questions. <laughs> okay. Our first questioner, which was Julia, is it? You win the GoPro. Come on up. Congratulations. You got a bag here that matches your shirt, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much to uh, Aditya and uh, Socio Next for that knowledge. Thank you for our, our helpers to answer the questions. Everyone, uh, we have a now a quick break. We're re reconvening here at uh, half past. You will need to be rescanned. So if you're going to sit in this room, please just walk outside and have Guy rescan you if you want to be eligible. And uh, thank you very much. A round of applause.